and welcome to you all of you on this ibc series fourth topic and the last one on the ibc series which was introduced or which was conducted by the branch and we as of we all know ibc was introduced by the government of india for faster resolution of financial litigations and the same has definitely benefited to all everyone all the stakeholders including the bankers the debtors and the creditors by timely resolution of insolvency process certainty of so certainty and clean title at the time of transfer prevent in preventing fraudulent activities by the debtors and relief for financial and operational creditor taking into consideration all the benefits which ibc is being is providing the branch has organized the workshop of four series on the same to cater to the needs of the members practicing or planning to practice in this field accordingly we have uh, taken the series and the first was taken by mr c amit poddar who spoke on corporate insolvency resolution process c a nireja kartik she spoke on pre package insolvency c a prasad dharap sir who spoke on opportunities in stays asset and funding of stays asset and resolution plan and today c a atul sir is with us to discuss on liquidation process under ibc i welcome you all and i request c a jitain saglani sir to give his welcome address thank you sir recording in progress so uh, am i audible yes sir yeah uh, thank you so much uh, treasurer dinesh rati ji uh, i welcome sir atul rat rajwarkar ji the key speaker of today's session who would be deliberating upon the process of liquidation uh, this being the last session as rightly said by dinesh ji that this is the last session in the series uh, which happens to be a vcm as well as a workshop series on uh, corporate insolvency and bankruptcy code uh, friends uh, we started with as as rightly stated by dinesh we started with cirp we continued with pre package insolvency uh, we went on to cover the uh, restructuring of assets the stress assets and now we are on to this particular last topic which is liquidation and to be co covered by expert speaker uh see atul rajwadkar who is a very good friend of mine and uh, i think he will be doing uh, justice to the topic uh, with his coverage i also wish to uh, acknowledge acknowledge the presence of uh, members in the managing committee including regional council member c abhijit kelkar uh, c a akshay gulane secretary uh, c a sanjay m agarwal vice chairman and uh, the managing committee members including c ajay vaswani c tutti battad c sanjay c agarwal swarupa vazalwar uh, friends uh, also i wish to welcome all the seniors in the profession and uh, i believe that uh, all the friends who are actually here uh, wish to practice in this area wish to understand what this is all about and i think this is a very good topic to actually end with because liquidation is the last process if i understand it rightly so today atul ji will be covering that and i hope that uh, whatever queries you have we will be asking him and getting it getting your doubts cleared so with this i wish to uh, conclude but i wish to convey you that we have lot many sessions planned today also we have one other program in the branch which starts at 6:30 uh, which is basically on the proposed new scheme of education and training and we have a discussion meet over here wherein uh, ca dayanivas sharma the bos academic chairman and ca vishal doshi the central council member <coughs> as well as vice chairman of this committee uh, would be gracing along with ca omesh sharma Uh, friends uh, we have lot many things planned up in the coming days so i wish and request you all to please be there with the efforts of the nagpur branch and let's meet and let's connect the future events with this i wish to conclude and hand over uh, hand it over to the coordinator sir dinesh rati thank you chairman sir now i request uh, mpm to sir to kindly give introduction of sir to rajendra kar sir the speaker for the day Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dinesh sir. Good evening, everyone. It gives me an immense pleasure to introduce the speaker of the session, who is not only a chartered accountant but insolvency professional and certified forensic auditor as well. Yes, I am talking about C. Atul Rajwadkar, sir. 
Currently, he is a partner of Artha Resolution Advisors LLP and co-founder and managing partner of Verb Asset Solution, which is a boutique advisory firm in the area of stressed asset resolution, due diligence, and debt syndication. If I talk about his professional achievements, so he has held senior position in SR Group, Yes Bank, SMS Limited, Abitrip Group. HSBC and has acted as IRP on four insolvency assignment and also has acted as advisor to RP in various insolvency assignments. He has also empaneled with leading banks like SBI, Bank of India, United Bank, etc. for IBC. Looking at the time constraint, I'm introducing him in very brief and now I request everyone to please join your hands together and welcome Atul sir. Thank you, Tripti. And uh, Atul sir, now the stage is of yours, and we request you to kindly continue on this uh, the topic. Atul sir, over to you. All and uh, thanks, Tripti, for the elaborate uh, introduction. Thank you. Uh, I share this screen. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yeah, so let us all begin uh, with the topic itself. So uh, uh, as has been introduced and as has been told by uh, uh, members that uh, earlier we, you must have gone through the uh, presentations or the uh, briefings about CIRP, uh, Three pack CIRP, and one of uh, the other topic was uh, covered by uh, Prasad Dharak. So today we'll be talking about liquidation, which is the last leg of uh, the insolvency process, and it is being guided by uh, the IBC as well as the liquidation process regulations. So I have tried to cover uh, these all topics. So like how the liquidation is initiated, then uh, the effects of the liquidation order, the steps involved in liquidation, and there are various uh, uh, other things which I have tried to cover. I have uh, made a table of contents you can just go through. Uh, I have tried to keep it as brief as possible. Uh, however, I would like to have questions uh, midway if that suits the, uh, the organizers. So I would like to have questions midway so that we can this this becomes an interactive uh, sessions and not a monologue. Definitely, sir. And I request every uh, delegate out here if you have any questions or any queries, you can ask Atul uh, sir or you can uh, write it on the chat box also. Right. So as you might have heard uh, through other uh, other speakers and uh, you know, whatever you might have studied earlier as well. So uh, the CIRP process begins with uh, the admission of application uh, uh, for initiation of CIRP. Uh, immediately after the admission of uh, application, the IRP gets appointed. There appears to be some echo. Yeah, so the IRP gets appointed. The IRP uh, has to call for claims and by after calling claims and verifying claims, he has to constitute COC. Then the COC appoints uh, the resolution professional. Then the resolution professional calls for uh, the resolution plans. If he receives the resolution plan, uh, and uh, if if that those uh, one of the plans gets approved by uh, the COC as well as NCLT, then the CIP process stops. The entire insolvency process stops uh, rather. If it doesn't, uh, if the plan is not approved by the COC or by the NCLT, then the liquidation uh, gets triggered. If the RP doesn't uh, receive any resolution plan, then as well the liquidation gets triggered. So we'll try to briefly study the effects of the uh, liquidation order. So immediately upon commencement of liquidation, uh, 
no uh, no suits or proceedings can be initiated except uh, uh, after the approval of except with the approval of adjudicating authority that is ncit the liquidation in most of the cases the resolution professional gets appointed as the liquidator unless uh, uh, otherwise suggested by the coc or by the adjudicating authority all the powers of the board of directors rest with liquidator naturally uh, immediately after the order of uh, uh, liquidation th that is uh, the liquidation order is deemed to be the notice of discharge of most of the all of the employees and workmen except in 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 a case where the liquidator decides to continue the operations of the uh, corporate debtor so we'll be talking about uh, continuation of operations as well uh, uh, during uh, the uh, the presentation uh one of the major areas is the fees of the uh, liquidator is either approved by the coc or is being guided by the regulation 4 of liquidation process regulations so these are the steps involved uh, in case of liquidation so by the order of uh, nclt the liquidation gets triggered the liquidator is appointed he will have to make a public announcement call for claims uh, a major decision uh, needs to be taken uh, within 7 days whether uh, the liquidator should appoint fresh valuers whether he wants to conduct fresh valuation or whether he can he should use the earlier valuation that has been done during crp he will also have to uh, verify the claims after verification of claims he'll have to prepare the asset memorandum and uh, other reports will go through the uh, reports which will have to be prepared by the liquidator in the next slides then he will form the liquidation estate then the sale of uh, assets happen as per uh, the regulations after realization of uh, say, uh, through the sale of assets the distribution would take place as per section 53 of ibc and after the uh, distribution the dissolution takes place unless the company is being sold as a going concern in that case the co company won't be dissolved so before we proceed with the powers and all uh, are there any questions in the in the basic uh, introduction to liquidation no so shall we move ahead yes sir yeah so these are the powers and duties of uh, sorry there is a mistake duties of the liquidator under section 35 okay so apart from uh, the basic duty is to basic uh, basic work of the liquidator is to realize the assets of the cd okay but apart from that he will have to carry out uh, other uh, these all functions i have uh, tried to summarize this so he'll have to carry out the business of the cd if he decides to continue the operations then he can obtain professional assistance wherever required he will have to uh, invite claims verify them and admit them he will form a stakeholders consultation committee from from the admitted claims from the admitted claimants uh of course he'll have to sign uh, endorse negotiate uh, instruments he'll have to in, 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 initiate or defend any suits he has been given the power to investigate the financial affairs of the cd once again then uh he'll have to of course take control of the assets and protect uh, and evaluate the assets so after the liquidator takes over he'll have to uh, uh, various reportings will have to be done by the liquidator throughout uh, the liquidation process it starts with a preliminary report which uh, has to be given within 75 days uh, we'll cover the uh, basic aspects of the pre uh, preliminary report in the next slide then an asset memorandum will have to be given along with the preliminary report that that is again uh, uh, within 75 days he'll have to file quarterly progress report uh 
after 15 days after the end of the quarter within 15 days of the end of the quarter sorry is there any question then uh, he'll have to uh, submit the asset sell uh, report meanwhile while carrying out the entire process of liquidation uh, he will be uh, having consultations with the uh, uh, stakeholders Vinesh bhai, there is some difficulty. Then the final report will be uh, submitted and after that the dissolution happens. So the timelines of uh, all of these reports have already been specified in the regulations. The contents of uh, the reports have also been specified in the regulations. And every report that is being submitted with uh, uh, every proceeding that is that happens with NCLT will have to submit it to IBBI. That is the regulator of the liquidator. Hello. Yeah. Uh, actually, one question. Uh, so it's more to understand that uh, in how many days uh, that liquidation should get completed post the order of our liquidation? So, as per the new uh, regulations, the timeline that has been specified is 12 months. Earlier, it used to be 24 odd months. Okay. So, and on quarterly basis, we need to submit a report uh, for this. Uh, so, in short, there will be maximum four reports, right? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. I mean, many a times the timeline gets extended due to litigations or uh, some of the other reason. But yes, I mean, ideally, there should be four uh, reports. Okay, got it. So the contents of the preliminary report uh, would be he'll have to state the uh, he'll have to state the basic details about the corporate debtor. So the capital structure of the CD, uh, his estimate of the assets and liabilities as per the books of accounts, and if he has reasons to believe that the books of account are not proper, are not reliable, he can give his own estimates basis. Whatever data is available to him, he'll have to state that data. Then uh, he'll also have to uh, state in the preliminary report whether he has to conduct any inquiry relating to promotion, formation, and the reasons of failure of the CD. And he'll have to state the action plan for the liquidation process, that how he is going to conduct the liquidation process. Uh, along with the preliminary report, yes. sorry. No, sir, you along continue. With, yeah. yeah, sorry. So along with the preliminary report, the asset memorandum will uh, have to be submitted. So as the name suggests, uh, the asset memorandum would uh, uh, tell the NCLT the value of the assets, the intended manner and the mode of uh, uh, sale of the assets. So there are two things. One is the manner of sale of asset and the mode of sale of asset. We'll come to that in the next slide. And his expectation of the amount of realization. So liquidator within 75 days will have to state how much he is expect, uh, expecting, uh, I mean, how much he is expecting from the realization of the assets. The important point we have to note here is that the asset memorandum is not accessible to any person during the course of liquidation. After the completion of sale, uh, the liquidator will have to submit asset sale report. So here he'll have to state the realized value, the cost of realization, the manner and mode of sale, how he sold the assets. Uh, if the value is uh, uh, that is realized is lesser than his estimate that has been submitted in the asset sale report, he'll have to give reasons, explanations for, for uh, the lesser value. And he'll have to share the details of the person to whom the asset has been sold. After that, the final report will have to be filed. So in the final report, as the name suggests, you'll have to give the entire account of liquidation, how the liquidation has been conducted, how the assets have been uh, realized or liquidated, 
the uh, uh, the details of liquidation cost once again and if the details of i mean if the cost of liquidation has exceeded his uh, earlier estimate then have to state the reasons uh in the same in the final report he'll have to <clears throat> give an application for either for the dissolution of the cd if the cd is not being sold as a going concern or for the closure of liquidation process if the corporate debtor is being sold as a going concern any questions up to this सो अ मेजर डिसीजन आफ्टर पासिंग ऑफ द लिक्विडेशन ऑर्डर अ मेजर डिसीजन will have to be taken by the liquidator is to whether they shut down the operations of the corporate debtor or whether to continue the operations of the corporate debtor for the beneficial use so uh, this discussion has been given uh, uh, in the um, uh, by the uh, by the act okay however uh, adjudicating authority may pass certain specific directions uh, uh, as well so he'll have to follow those directions Uh, as a good practice uh, an ip uh, should ideally consult the uh, coc coc that is prior to the uh, order of liquidation which, uh, which exists prior to the order of liquidation that whether uh, the operation should be continued or not because if they are in sync with your decision then it becomes easier so this is a major decision because it affects the entire process uh, it also either helps uh, or delays the uh, the the sale of assets so that's a crucial decision we will have to take and there are various factors which would be involved so in two of our cases we have taken a decision to continue the operations we have run the operations during cip as well as uh, during liquidation so if the liquidator decides that the operations should be continued so apart from the normal uh, reporting which he will have to do to various authorities he will have to uh, perform these will be his day to day task so he will conduct the business activities of the cd he will do statutory compliances as he has been doing earlier uh, cash flow plan planning he will have to manage Like like any other activity while running the business, what what that that would have been performed by the CEO, he'll have to continue performing those activities. So managing administrative activities, the recovery of pending dues, continue. So क्या गलत है? Existing position से ऊपर ऊपर चलना है तो मंथन करना चाहिए. इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि अपन बीत हैं. मेरे को मानो सबसे बुरा लगता है अपन तक सब सीए मिलते पंद्रह सी अपन वालों को अपने पुपेश में गाली मारते रहते मेरे को सबसे बुरा लगता है वो बात ही नहीं करते रुपी कैन यू आस एवरीवन टू म्यूट so we'll try to understand the mode of sale of corporate debtor under regulation 30t with uh, 33 of liquidation process regulations so two options have been given uh, in the regulations one is through private sale and the other is to auction uh, auction is of course always preferred because it, it's a transparent process it ensures transparency however if private sale has to be done then uh, the conditions have already been mentioned that is the assets are perishable the uh, if liquidator feels that the value of asset is likely to be uh, is likely to get deteriorated uh, he has to approach if he has obtained a specific permission from the nclt or if at all 
if he has conducted auctions earlier however the private sale is offering him more price than the last failed auction so if suppose the uh, price that uh, reserve price of the last failed auction so suppose if the reserve price of the last failed auction is say 100 rupees and if someone is offering 110 rupees he can straight away go for private sale so these are the options which have been given to the liquidator to sell the assets of the corporate debtor so uh, the individual assets can be uh, sold uh, on stand alone basis the assets uh, can be slum uh, uh, sold in uh, slum sale the assets can be sold uh, as collectively that is some group can be formed and the group of assets can be sold assets can be sold in parcels the most important uh, is that the uh, corporate debtor can be sold as a going concern or if there are multiple business activities then the individual businesses can be sold as going concern so if suppose if we have a steel plant or there and a cement plant okay so the cement plant business can also be sold as a going concern or the steel plant individually can be sold as a going concern the business independent business can be sold as a going concern So in our case, uh, one of the company we have sold under slum sale, and uh, one company we have sold as a going concern. Any questions here? so the last leg of uh, and one of the important steps in the liquidation is to is the distribution of assets so one of the major shifts that ibc has taken um, has ensured in in the distribution processes that the government dues have taken a back seat so we'll understand that uh, uh, from the distribution mechanism the waterfall mechanism which has been stated in uh, section 53 so first of all the insolvency resolution cost the unpaid insolvency resolution cost and the liquidation cost shall be paid in full then comes the uh, workman dues up to 24 months as well as the debts of the secured financial creditors will be paid simultaneously in proportion to their admitted claims so the priority is not that the Yeah, workman dues will be paid first, then the secured financial creditors. It would run. It would be paid parallelly. Then, <clears throat> the wages of uh, the employees. Then the financial debts to unsecured creditors. Then comes the government dues and. Uh, the debts owed to the secured financial creditors after realization of uh, their security interest and other remaining dues the equity shareholders come in the last i have many a times faced a question about liquidators fees uh so i thought better i should include the the liquidators fees here and many are interested how much a liquidator earns so the liquidator fees is generally uh, decided by the coc uh, under regulation 39d of cip regulations and if the coc doesn't decide then naturally the uh, re uh, regulation 4 of liquidation process regulation would uh, be applicable so i have covered regulation 4 over here that assuming that the coc doesn't decide or coc states that the regulation 4 would be followed so this is 
the regulation four stated here. The amount of remuneration is divided into two parts. Uh, on realization and on distribution. So if he realizes uh, hundred rupees, but he doesn't distributes uh, distribute that amount, so he is eligible only the portion which is stated in the realization. So generally, आप तीन महीने में यदि असेट बेच पाते हो सो देन यू द लिक्विडेटर कैन गेट मैक्सिम ऑफ द फीस इन द नेक्स्ट सिक्स मंथ्स द फी रिड्यूसेस एंड पोस्ट दैट इट ड्रास्टिकली रिड्यूसेस सो जनरली नॉट मेनी लिक्विडेटर्स आर एबल टू सेल द असेट्स विद इन से फर्स्ट फर्स्ट ट्वेल्व और मंथ्स so most of the people most of the liquidators uh, lie in the third uh, column so aap dekhenge ki 40 crore ke baad jo fees hai wo bahut zyada lucrative nahi hai uh hello haan ji ha uh, so i just want to understand that here uh, here if i see on the first disbursed uh, on the realization of 1 uh, crore it's 5% uh, 5% is right so along with that if i have distributed uh, assuming i have distributed 100 percentage so on that i will get 2.5 percentage haan ji so it's like 5 Aap plus 5 plus 2.5 5 plus 2.5 right right okay okay halaki kuch liquidators is pe uh, defer karte hain uh, the regulation states that aap 5 percent aap eligible ho lekin uh, you you should uh, Out of that five percent, half should be uh, taken uh, during after realization, and half should be taken post distribution. So I didn't so, get. It, आपने suppose एक करोड़ का asset बेचा हुआ है. You are हाँ. eligible for say five lakh rupees. Hmm. Out of that five or lakh rupees, you should uh, avail two and half lakhs after realization and two and half lakhs after distribution. ओके सो इट्स लाइक ओनली फाइव परसेंटेज नहीं मैं वही कह रहा हूँ तो देर आर डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियंस मेरे uh, इसमें अभी तक कोई केस लॉ आया नहीं है सो मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट इज सेवन एंड हाफ परसेंट आउट ऑफ दैट सेवन एंड हाफ परसेंट पहला जो पांच परसेंट है उसका हाफ आप रियलाइजेशन पे लोगे okay. और नेक्स्ट हाफ आप डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पे लोगे अलॉन्ग विद टू एंड हाफ लैक Which are uh, available on distribution. Got it. Got it. And in this period, if the liquidator changes, so the one who distributes will get that money. Okay. 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 before taking the case study um, do you have any questions aaj rishi surana ji nahi hai kya okay so we'll move to the case study part so i have tried to cover uh, two case studies where uh, one is the case where the operations are shut shut and uh, the other where the operations have continued so suppose there is an engineering fabrication company the operations are shut there, there is a workforce of around 150 odd persons including laborers and workers the machines have been lying idle plant is not maintained security persons uh, are not paid staff is in, is not in place records are not updated so all these challenges will have to be faced by uh, the liquidator so what is expected from the liquidator 
he'll have to take stock of assets he'll have to call for claims of course then uh, he'll formulate scc stakeholders consultation committee the most important thing and the most difficult task is to get uh, money from the uh, stakeholders because to maintain those assets to to uh, keep the security uh, intact uh, he'll have to uh, borrow money from the stakeholders so the nowadays the regulation states that uh, these stakeholders will have to contribute uh, for the liquidation cost so the liquidation cost would mainly involve the security agencies uh, the money to be paid to security agencies uh, the man manpower he may have to employ lease charges if there are any and the other incidental ex uh, incidental expenses then he'll have to update the records uh, with whatever possible help and he'll have to make arrangements for sale of assets and of course quarterly reporting will happen so here uh, some of the facts have been considered some of the hypothetical situations have been assumed so that's a declaration from my end and wherever required a liquidator will uh, have to take uh, the requisite approval the other case study uh, is where the liquidator decides uh, to continue the operations of the cd then suddenly his uh, activities start uh, uh, rather becomes many fold so apart from carrying out uh, the normal liquidation process he'll have to continue the operations and then he'll have to continue the manage continue and manage the operations of the corporate debtor so i have assumed um, i have given a case uh, study over here so it suppose it's a mall developer company we have managed a mall developer company so in that case the land belong to uh, the government authorities so it has been given on lease its old lease dues were pending uh, the lease agreement uh, had a clause of termination uh, if the company goes into liquidation there were various tenants uh, these were all long term lease but uh, were due for renewal uh, some of the tenants were not paying rentals then came the corona lockdown and the mall had to be shut so the liquidator faced the decisions to uh, cut down on rentals or give discounts to the tenants though the recurring costs were involved the revenues were stopped uh, post opening uh, post corona lockdown uh, the tenants demand uh, the businesses were suffering so tenants raised their demands he left to uh, he had to consult uh, the stakeholders consultation committee for that the government uh, re uh, refused to reduce the lease uh, the ground rent the cash flow had uh, was dwindling so he had to tackle those issues uh, there were gst defaults so gst was after uh, the liquidator these are the actions taken by the liquidator so he took control of the assets he had to understand first of all understand the business of the corporate debtor uh, then he channelized the assets uh, the cash flows uh, he tried to make communications with the local authority not to and uh, try to convince them not to terminate the contract because uh, the mall was hosting so many tenants and a uh, lot of employment was depending on that so we were success, uh, successful in convincing the authorities not to close the uh, not to cancel the lease we had continued the dialogues with the tenants to retain uh, them because there was a threat threat of uh, they going to some other malls during covid uh, covid lo lockdown and after the covid lo lockdown uh, we, we consulted uh, the stakeholders for reduction of uh, rentals wherever required we have uh, we have reduced we have renegotiated the terms uh, for for the lockdown period or uh, for the renegotiated period 
uh, while managing the business i also had to understand that uh, that we have to advertise for for uh, filling up the vacant spaces we learned that uh, the mall has to advertise to to attract footfall because the success of the mall depends on uh, what footfall it gets we tried to make certain old recoveries we were successful in that so we could uh, the build a good uh, war chest and the liquidation which has not only covered the liquidation expenses but uh, gave a sumptuous amount uh, for this to the stakeholders and wherever required we have initiated action against the defaulters simultaneously of course we have made all the efforts to uh, sell the assets and finally uh, we sold the cd as a going concern so this is all about the liquidation process uh, so before moving to the opportunities which i see uh, for our uh, profession i would like you to ask certain questions so that this becomes an interactive session any questions as on sir and yeah sorry hello as on sir i understand uh, questions my we might take the questions later on also okay not a problem please so while running uh, the cip process or the the end, uh, liquidation process uh, whatever opportunities i could spot i thought that i should share over here so i can categorize those opportunities in uh, in two segments one is in the during the enterprise management and the other is under the ibc proceedings so uh, For, uh, during the enterprise management like any other uh, business there are various opportunities for for the ca fraternity so like any 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 running business you can act as gst consultant tax consultant or for statutory compliances of course statutory audits will have to be done <clears throat> and they will continue then <clears throat> there could be systems management or the systems audit internal audit can continue you can advise about bookkeeping because probably the staff may leave so the bookkeeping exercise can be outsourced uh you can also advise uh, for business development data recovery data recovery is a major question so it's a very big opportunity of course staff outsourcing can be done for particular divisions while while appoint my making all these appointments the ip will have to take requisite approvals of the coc stakeholders wherever required so and that transparency will have to be maintained certain disclosures have to be done there whenever uh, an ip appoints a professional so those disclosures will have to be uh, made on ibbi's website then these are the opportunities i could see for uh, all of us uh, under the ibc proceedings of course we can act as va uh, valuers if we are qualified uh, any practicing chartered accountant can act as uh, transaction auditor or as forensic auditor wherever uh, the the liquidator or the rp appoints uh, uh, sorry the liquidator appoints someone then uh, the uh, of course the ca fraternity with, with their business uh, connect can help uh, the liquidator identify uh, or the rp to identify resolution applicants or bidders in uh, in the liquidation process they can act as advisors for to carry out due diligence for the prospective bidders they can act as marketing professionals as well to find out the buyer uh 
again uh, probably it's a reputation act as advisor in preparation of resolution plan because the resolution plan uh, preparation is a is a uh, detailed exercise so cas can play a lot of role in preparation of resolution plan wherever uh, any of these persons are appointed by the ip again uh, appropriate approval and disclosures will have to be made so this is all from my end if there are any questions we can discuss any question from delegates atul sir in one uh, one particular uh, cases in cases of like uh, when the uh, pro, uh, this assets are leased assets suppose is midc leased asset so i understand midc's dues are not exempted in under liquidation or under ipc i understand sir ideally midc should file a claim right because yeah. as as i have uh, discussed uh, in other case the case which we handled the land did not belong to the mall developer okay yes hello hello yeah yeah please so the ownership lies uh, li uh, lies with someone else okay yeah. similar is the case with midc so whatever midc is dues midc is dues uh, uh, they, they they should ideally file the claim and um, as happens in most of the liquidation cases if if they fall under waterfall mechanism then they would be paid if not it will be deemed to be paid however there are various instances where midc has denied to uh, you know follow section 53 but that uh, will have to be taken up uh, appropriately uh do we have any case law on that till date i haven't come across there are but, ongoing cases but i haven't come across a decision okay, because in one of the cases uh, the midc has said that as the our dues has not been paid we will not uh, we will not go for uh, we will not give noc for assignment of lease deed similar similar thing should uh, can happen with uh, say like uh, Uh, you have msb dues right so the yeah. uh, electricity department may deny continuing uh, this thing so uh, many of the government authorities are yet to uh, come to terms with uh, this law so in that case uh, the, the bidder or the liquidator can uh, suit or the ip can uh, make an application uh, with nclt generally the ip would ask the bidder to make an application in that case with nclt so in one of the cases we have uh, we have come across that the licenses were not transferred by the department and the bidder had faced uh, some issues with that okay and in one of the case as the land was agriculture land but it was in uh, class 2 land okay in that particular case also uh, sale it was not allowed by the registry office i understand department so in in such particular cases see this law is very new it is still evolving every day we we find some or the other decision and uh, the ibbi has been quite proactive in uh, and the government has also been very proactive in changing the laws so uh, uh, this is this is still an evolving um, code right so the decisions would be made uh, courts may pass certain decisions to uh, directing the authorities to fall in line but there are no exceptions that has been that, those have been made in this law rather this law uh, you know prevails over other laws and tell me whose responsibility it is to transfer the uh, title deeds in the favor of the successful bidder suppose it is the liquidator will have to um, make the sale certificate i know but uh, now the in case the liquidator has given the sale certificate but uh assignment of lease deed is not allowed by the department so the liquidator MIT. should ideally uh, uh, file an application uh, with nclt with nclt department to the court okay okay and then in the same case of when it's a class 2 land or something like that where are the transfer of title is not clear yeah 
and what happened to dic dues dic claims and dues i mean the subsidies which are available to the company yeah or suppose in case what happens in some of the cases uh, the operating period is for 15 years for any subsidy cases mm -hmm. though i am taking the subsidy within 10 years and in 11th or 12th year suppose the plant is being sold out through liquidator or uh, plant is being transferred uh, under any other mechanism in that case what happens so if if it is being sold as a going concern all the uh, benefits are available to the bidder as a in unless the entity gets sold if you are selling the assets then um, all the subsidies will go okay then they will have to be separately taken up uh, with the dic that will be a new uh, start as such dic no be and because uh, uh, in that case also yeah, uh, sorry what happens ki we need to take a, a no dues from dic in case of transfer of land or transfer of land and building mm -hmm. so or otherwise we need to uh, pay back the subsidy then who is responsibility it will be to pay back the subsidy whether it will so be the happens, bidder this happens during the normal course of business like like, like mm -hmm. it uh, the transfer is not happening through insolvency yeah right so if the tra uh, uh, transfer is happening through insolvency then these uh, this condition will not be applicable okay fir to sabhi log aa jayenge na sir matlab then there are various other dues okay yeah i know uh, i mean the customs will have its own priority the the gst will have its own priority sir good evening sir and uh, atul sir uh, uh, tell me uh, in case Uh, the uh, no due no dues or approval is not coming in three months four months or five months, but the promoter has paid. Uh, but the successful bidder has paid the money. Till what time the success successful bidder will have? You are talking about. In any case, suppose the transfer is not allowed by the any of the uh, department. Suppose it's MIDC department or uh, DIC department and something like that, hmm. and the success. successful bidder is not getting the possession of the property or the building or the plant and machinery so what will happen in that particular case whether the liquidator will have to refund the money aaya ho paisa koi wapas nahi karta sir is mein generally kya hota hai ki as as a matter of adequate disclosure okay we write this things we i mean as a good practice we should write all these things in the uh, either the information document or the process memorandum okay so generally okay. Uh, the liquidators uh, make a process memorandum document okay where okay. all such disclosures are already made by the liquidator that these any any liabilities which can come up okay or any issues that can come up post the transfer of sale certificate okay they will have to be dealt with by them so suppose tomorrow the gst comes and says that you have boss you have transferred the asset and the gst is applicable okay mm. so that gst liability will, will be of course on the head of the buyer okay sorry that any duties taxes will be will have to be paid by the buyer however of course any old dues if some authority comes and demands old dues from uh, uh, the the new buyer the liquidator should uh, extend his helping hand in uh, uh, to, to to the uh, to the uh, bidder or to the successful bidder Okay, sir. So there is one question in chat box. Whether in any situation management can take over its assets during liquidation process? What are the ways available with the promoters? So, uh, uh, IBC may there is an exception for SMEs. Okay, so uh, SMEs which are fulfilling those uh, that criteria, they can participate in the auction. So, uh, to them, the, uh, the section twenty nine A ineligibility will not be applicable. And is Section Twelve available in the liquidation? No. No, sir. Okay. Uh, if any members have any other queries or questions on this, okay. Uh, so sir and i think that uh, uh, members have no questions right now and if you want to deliberate on something else
So generally, I feel uh, stress assets itself is a very vast area, not only through IBC but through the other available uh, mechanism as well. It's a for for our profession, uh, our, our professional colleagues. It's a very big opportunity. I see a bright future for uh, funds operating in in this particular uh, segment. Like in US, you have uh, vulture funds. For, uh, they're, they're they're called virtual vulture funds. Okay. So uh, I think that culture will also come in India. That someone would acquire. There are special situation funds in India as well. But then there would be, uh, you know, there would be more focus on acquiring stress assets, reviving them, and selling them off. So, I think we have a long uh, way to go in stress assets. There are multiple opportunities. Our uh, professional colleagues should focus on that. And uh, apart from the advisory roles, there are there are other opportunities which I personally see. So we should try and explore those opportunities as well. Yeah. Hello. Uh, sir, you have mentioned here debt recovery. So, can you just uh, explain broadly in this? Sir, we have a lot of emailers aate hai, uh, as RPs or as uh, liquidators from non CAs. Okay? Those who uh, outsource the uh, recovery mechanism. Okay? So, uh, generally, we have that any, uh, in, uh, any uh, IBC company which is Going through IBC, okay, has got various recoveries to be made. Okay, you have many data, some receivables, some. So this is an area where uh, you know, lot many. I mean, some of the people are uh, trying to uh, outsource this area. Okay, to get outsource this area. So, hamesha, wo log non CS dikte hain. So this is the this this entire thing can be outsourced. Of course, uh, uh, adequate approval will have to be taken by um, the concerned RP or liquidator. But this can be done, and this is an area. So, you think that the company may suppose 100 crore debtors hai, and you are helping the RP or the COC in realizing those uh, debtors. Your fees, of course, would be dependent on the negotiated terms. Right. So this is an area where you apply, you apply your team, separate team is there. And it is focusing on debt, debt, debt recovery. So this is uh, uh, this is another area which is coming up. So, so I just want to understand here that uh, how and uh, as a practice, what are we can develop here? So what I understand from a basic knowledge that a debt data recovery, either it's, it 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 can be more of discounting the data or else. Uh, follow follow following them for collection so how as an practitioner uh, what principles should be followed in this practice so thoda sa challenging hai kyunki uh, discount ka adhikar aapko hoga nahi hoga uh, nahi hoga basically okay Thikai? because uh, aap immediate discount to nahi offer kar sakte hain ha of course we can take permission uh, from uh, the stakeholders or from the authority okay and uh, however, uh, it, it requires a lot of efforts, right? So you'll have to make necessary communications. First of all, you'll have to follow up with them. You'll have to reconcile the accounts. There could be, uh, you know, there could be false dates as well in, in a balance sheet. Okay. Yes. So this is a task in itself. And the RP is not, uh, many of the RPs are not, uh, you know, uh, they're not uh, staffed enough to uh, carry out this task. Okay. So this task can can itself be outsourced, and Got any it. recovery that happens would naturally uh, benefit the uh, stakeholders. Got it. Got so generally, kya hota hai? Otherwise, uh, most of the data recovery, jo purana hai, uska value bahut kam uh, aata ja raha hai. So usme se yadi koi recovery hoti hai, so that will be a benefit for all. Okay. Iski practices develop hongi. I mean, this is this is a new area. And not uh, professionals are not getting into it. Uh, the, whatever uh, agencies those are approaching us are not uh, CAs basically. Okay. Sir, there is one more question in chat. Balance 90% 
not paid by bidder in liquidation process in this case what shall be the steps taken by nclt in one case class 2 class 1 land conversion process paid due to official gazette in 7 78 day liquidator didn't took permission from authorities to sell class 2 land 90% amount was also not paid within 30 days whether emd will be forfeited ye uh, pratik ji a typical uh, situation hai okay so uh, as i said jaise banks asset bechti hain waise liquidator bhi uh, apna process document mein aur sara uh, contracts mein likhega that it is being sold on as is where is basis right मुझे क्लास वन क्लास टू का डिफ्रेंसिएशन नहीं पता आई एम नॉट अवेयर ऑफ लॉस ओके बट एज अ प्रोसेस आई एम टेलिंग यू दैट इफ जो सीधी हमारे इसमें कुछ एक फ्रेज था राइट क्या कहते हैं जूज डेम जनरेस और बायर्स भी वेयर राइट सो बायर विल हैव टू बी अवेयर अबाउट दीज थिंग्स ऑफकोर्स द लिक्विडेटर विल हैव टू गिव एज मच इंफॉर्मेशन एज पॉसिबल so if he has stated this fact and still the buyer has gone ahead uh, for purchase of uh, those assets so then i have to bear the brunt generally okay, that okay. thank you sir the amount will not be refunded the bidder will have to approach to the nclt he can make a complaint to the uh, liquid uh, to the nclt against the liquidator if he, uh, the liquidator has done anything wrong or hasn't disclosed anything ओके ओके सर डियर फ्रेंड्स एनी मोर क्वेश्चन अवेलेबल इन चैट बॉक्स अरे मेरे वो कोर्स है सर्टिफिकेशन कोर्स है वो कोर्स में पढ़ रहा हूँ अभी मैं पढ़ाई कर रहा हूँ मैं दस साल लागे मैंने मेरे दस साल अभी हुआ अभी समझो सर ग्यारह साल अभी अभी ग्यारह साल अभी हो जाए मैंने सेप्टेम्बर में तो मैं दस साल जैसा भी मैं पढ़ाई चालू कर दी थी तो ना वैसे ऑफिस के टाइम में थोड़ा बहुत पढ़ने पढ़ने टाइम मिले थोड़ा नहीं मिले तो पढ़ाई चालू है हमारी अभी अभी तो शाम वगैरह मुंबई गई तो पढ़ाई चालू है हमारी पर एग्जाम जब तक की दीस नहीं तब तक के पास हुई नहीं तो जब तक की और मैं करीब करीब डेढ़ दो साल पहला मिला है तो रंजित भैया ने हाँ तो एटले केस चालू है ऐसा मतलब अभी अभी मैं कर रहा हूँ मैं कर रहा हूँ पढ़ाई डिफिकल्ट है साली एग्जाम क्योंकि पासिंग साठ पासिंग है निगेटिव मार्किंग है नहीं 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 बहुत सारी चीजों है एक्सक्यूज मी इंसॉल्वेंसी बैंक है कंपनीज एक्ट है सब एक्ट पढ़ना पड़े सब एक्ट का एमसी क्यू है एमसी क्यू है बहुत सारी सरफेस पहला जैसे पढ़ाई करता था ना भैया जैसे पढ़ने में थोड़ा आसान रहता तो सॉरी अतुल सर आई अंडरस्टैंड समी वॉज टॉकिंग टू समन एल्स बट इम्पोर्टेंट बात कर any question uh, sir okay, anderson so, chat box mein kor tha whether the promoters can ask for valuation report so um, valuation report has to be kept secret okay so it can't can't be shared with the promoters the law prohibits from that isliye aap jab asset memorandum mein submit karte ho liquidation process mein to kisi ko bhi available nahi hota hai nobody can access that so promoters ko to specifically nahi diya jayega phone clear sir Who can see? Okay, sorry. Any more questions? Sir, I think the questions are over now. Right, Jee. Atul sir. now yes, thanks yes. thanks for your detailed deliberation on the liquidation process under ibc and i understand all the delegates would have definitely got benefited out of it and i thank all the members present here for their uh, presence and i request all of you to kindly join us the branch for future seminars and get benefited for the deliberation as we have done today one more uh, and i would like to give you the brief of uh, seminars in the next future uh, near future one is on 24th of june and the same is on taxation on digital asset 
on 25th it's on life after death and 27th which is also an msme day where we are taking uh, the seminar on opportunities in msme so i request you all of you to kindly be pre present or give your presence and uh, we are also starting ca week we all know that 1st of july is the ca day and we are starting a uh, ca week from 26th and there will be uh, we will be sending you all the details for those particular week and i request all of you to kindly join us and i thank you all for today's seminar thanks thanks a lot thank you atul sir